Honoured to be here, flattered, um, feel a little bit out of my comfort zone. Uh, 25% of the football supporters are here, so I, can, I got 75% of people <laughs> behind, which is great. <laughs> and I was, th- I was thinking to myself, um, what, what, can I, what can I talk about? What can I bring to today to what you don't already know? I mean, so often in London, we look across the pond, the Big Apple, see, what are you doing there? What's... What, what amazing new, exciting uh, ideas and concepts they're coming up with. Uh, so to, for me to be here and to talk to you, I, I, I feel very honoured. So I, st- I was struggling. What, what on earth am I going to talk about? And you may see the title of, of Modernisation of the Service Industry. Well, it's quite a big strapping title. But it came about where I was having a meeting with uh, some of my fellow managers in uh, dinner, which is in Knightsbridge. And we were sitting at a table. It was a chess table. Uh, so we have a table in the, in the, in the kitchen overlooking, overlooking the pass, and there I was sitting, thinking, oh, I've got this fantastic opportunity, I'm going to come all the way over to, to New York and, and have a little chat, and, and a wonderful opportunity to get to know like-minded people, but I don't know what to talk about. And we were sitting there, and there was, everyone was scratching their heads, going, what? Well, yeah, it's a good, good, good question, Simon, what can you talk about? And everyone knows I can talk about a lot of things, and, it's, and they're probably looking at me going, you never, you never stop talking and briefing, so <laughs> it shouldn't be a problem for you while you're asking, but... I was sitting there, and, and then I noticed in the corner of my one of the tables, table table 46, we were making liquid nitrogen ice cream, as you do. And then, uh, uh, and then, and then it was the guest had the iPad out, and it was filming it. One minute the waiter, next minute, <laughs> as you do. Uh, and then I was talking to the manager, who was no longer paying attention to me because I wasn't giving him the love. And he was emailing his rotor to all the staff, and they were. And then there's another table over there tweeting about how fantastic the meal is. And then you've got a couple of uh, photographers taking a picture of uh, Ash, our head chef, taking some photos. And I was thinking to myself, boy, have things changed. Now, first of all, I'm sitting in a, I've got a, a table in a kitchen. When I first started, um, the last place anyone wants to be was a kitchen, let alone for the guests to be. And now people are having kitchen tours. I mean, that's the norm, isn't it? Uh, so the idea came from seeing how much service in particular and the guest expectations have changed over the years and there's a, there's a flip side to this and what I'll try and uh, very briefly touch upon is that there have been I think quite significant changes maybe driven from te- technology maybe from um, new trends or how society is changing I think certainly in London the habit of eating out is literally that a habit it's no longer a luxury it's kind of a way of life and um, we, we benefit from it greatly in London uh, restaurant scene is um, booming because of it, and regardless of the financial situation, we just seem to be opening more and more restaurants at the time. We always see all these wine suppliers and the crockery and glassware suppliers are constantly rubbing their hands together. They seem to be wealthier than the bankers these days. I can't think why. Um, <laughs> despite all these changes, I still think the core values of service haven't changed, not in the slightest. Um, yes, we may dress uh, more casually, there may be fewer rules, but End of the day, it's about people. So, just going to talk a little bit through the journey at the Fat Duck. Some challenges we faced over the years, and uh, just just um, just let you know how I feel and, and what's going on. Really, I mean, the the challenges we have faced sometimes have been quite unique. Sometimes have been we all, uh, a struggle that we all have. We have to embrace uh, the technology element of things. We, people get a bit upset when seeing we have TripAdvisor. I don't know what you feel about TripAdvisor. I've got to sit on the fence a little bit, but if I ever feel like I need to go on holiday, I'm, I normally go on TripAdvisor for five minutes, and then I realise that I actually don't want a holiday after all. It's <laughs> the, last thing, the last thing I need. Uh, it seems too much stress and disappointment. Uh, <laughs> but, but save yourself a fortune, it's great. Um, but it is valuable feedback, it, and you've got to embrace it. And, and social media, we're a bit, a bit behind the social media. Some, some, um, sometimes we look upon it as a bit of a... Uh, I'm busy enough with the, already tweeting all the time and having to keep an eye on your, all the messages and everything, but it, it's a very powerful tool. And, and, and going online, I remember the first uh, challenge that Hestings said to me, right, got the situation, Simon, okay, uh, we take reservations on the telephone, and we have two, two lovely ladies who looked a little bit overworked, and the reason was because we take 30,000 calls in a day, and we have 14 tables to sell. Um, and for some reason, we were a little bit disappointed. Uh, some of the guests, I'm sorry, were disappointed in, in having to call and, it, and uh, not getting through, and then having to listen to our wonderful, even ever gone on the, 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 the telephone line, we have a, um, a, st- a story 
Alice in Wonderland, which is great the first time, hearing the story of Alice in Wonderland. The second time, it's quite good. You might have missed a couple of points. But when it gets to the third or fourth time you're hearing Alice in Wonderland, uh, it, gets, it gets a bit too, too over the top. And you're on hold. You get through. First of all, you get through. Eureka. I'm not, not engaged. Then you're on hold. And then you get through to the lovely ladies who answer the phone. And what do they tell you? Oh, I'm sorry, we're fully booked. Oh, when's the next available table? We don't have, we're fully booked for the next two months. Oh, sorry. Um, and when can I, when can I, can I reserve something? Uh, uh, no, I'm sorry, you have to call back tomorrow. Right, so you want me to call tomorrow, listen to Alice in Wonderland again, get through to you, and, and then you can tell me that we're not, yeah. So how do you get around that sort of dilemma? And, and we, we actually reluctantly, uh, I say reluctantly, we looked at it in a different way where I said, well, it's obvious, you go online. Take the phone out of the equation, you go online, you have this availability, and uh, they've said, oh, Hester wouldn't go for it, no way, you want that personal interaction, which is rightly so. But we went online, and now we actually have a situation where uh, the telephone line is really not, not even needed. It's there for people who want to inquire, so people who want to have an update on their booking. You go online, and you, can, you don't have to have, have the frustration of the telephone, you can check any booking, and you can look two months in advance. We've also developed um, a waitlist function as well. So you can go online and actually put your name down for a wait list. And it's one way of overcoming a, a bit of an, a challenge, a good challenge, but a challenge nevertheless. But what happens is, and this is, the, this is the flip side to a lot of things, you do lose that human interaction. We've always, we've always discussed it already, and we've, I think we're going to go uh, touch upon it throughout today, is it's about people. We're about people. This industry is about people. The atmosphere you create in the room is, is created by the people within it, whether it's the, the staff who are working in it or the guests who, who come in and, and uh, submerge themselves in it. So what happens if you take away that interaction? What is your first impression? Your first impression is like an airline. You're booking a ticket, right? You're booking a ticket for a flight. Uh, you're paying X amount for it. You, we don't charge surcharges for uh, taxes or extra credit card funds, but nevertheless, it's still a transaction. And where's the hospitality in that? And what we took from that was how do we... How do we change? How do we, how do we evolve? How do we improve that system? We've overcome one problem because we're not disappointing people and, and we're providing a service that is, um, in our opinion, improved and it's, it's a way forward, but we've lost that interaction. We had stories where we, we find out there were uh, maybe, oh, well, I, can, I know a few of the soldiers that are coming in, they're, they're literally they're going away and they wanted to have the last meal before coming, um, going out on service and they wanted to come to the fact that we have times when uh, not just anniversaries but you know there's the important moments and they choose to, to bring it to the to the, to the fact that how do you how do we keep disappointing these people how do we get around that and how do you keep hold of those stories so we we developed a software where um, and a program combined with dealing with um, confirmations and then having animations to go through it is to sample that, 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 that uh, we send an animated uh, confirmation email to the, to the guests to, for them to, ex to, to excite them, to give them a little understanding of what, what they're about. We, we have that human connection through the phones to, to try and address that um, initial contact from before. So what am I saying? Well, it's, it's clear for me that we have to embrace technology. Things are changing at a rapid, rapid pace. And the message from the message from London is they want the excitement, they want to learn, they want the the, the, the public now and the, and the and the guests that come to us are far more educated, they're far more um, engaged with what's going on. They want to know about the origin of the produce, they want to know about the sustainability of items, they want to know so much more than before and how do you how do you address those? How do you actually get that message across? And it's been through um, explaining and, and um, educating the staff and educating the teams, and but getting them engaged. And the real key for us is is personal service. How do you appease all these demands and wants and still keep it personal? And what we've done. Um, over the last few years is looking at different ways to make your one experience your own. Now we, 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 a good example about coming in and sharing a magical moment and having that trust in that 
uh, in the restaurant to deliver that, that magical moment because you only get one chance at it. And I often tell, tell the team at the Duckers, this is, your, this is one service for you. This could be the one time these guests in this room come to this restaurant, the one time that they experience this. And they may be waiting for months, they may be waiting for years, but that's your responsibility to ensure you deliver every time on every guest. But how can we make it that much better? We, if you don't know, we have a 14-course tasting menu. So there's, everyone has the same menu. Um, and when we first came, it was quite scripted. and It was quite... It, it's a bit harsh to say it was like a production, but we felt as if uh, you were processed a little bit. How do you make that individuality? And what we've done is we've looked at different ways to observe. W example is one of our starters is a, is a red cabbage and... and um, um, mustard ice cream, red cabbage mustard ice cream, as you do, uh, starter. But we watch them, which hand they put, which hand do they pick up the spoon? They only serve with a teaspoon. And from that point onwards, they will be, they'll be, if they're left-handed, we will serve the cutlery left-handed. If they, if they have pref personal preferences, we will, you know, I've never seen any dietary requirement that we haven't been able to obtain. Sometimes I've seen a few nervous breakdowns in the kitchen where <laughs> they do, what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, but, it's ever it's ever changing, right? It's uh, I, every every month there's a new there's a new challenge, there's a new there's a new um, curveball coming in, and that's the way you'll see it. It's not as it's not a problem, it's a challenge, and you can overcome that. You can create another special moment. Um, often our dishes and it appears to be very static and in the fact up, but actually they're held back until we can deliver the same dish in a variety of different ways. For example. Um, we have our, our, our lollies. We have three different savoury lollies. We wanted to serve them uh, vegetarian as well as uh, full fat, you could call it, uh, the regulars, whatever you may remember. And we literally held the best dish back for six months just in order to get it right, just in order to have the, the vegetarian option for that, for that dish. So I think awareness of what we're about and awareness of the public and what they need is key to the success of the business and having the, the, the staff really understand that and understand their responsibilities. So, I must add, uh, Dinner by Heston Blumenthal and the Perfectionist Cafe, the names of those restaurants have nothing to do with me whatsoever. Uh, I have campaigned not to have those na uh, names, but if for some reason it was ignored. We're not perfect, by any means. Um, far from it. Um, our latest restaurant is, is open in, in Terminal 2. I flew from Terminal 2 to get here, uh, so one extra shift before I left. Uh, we'll be serving 1,400 guests uh, in a day and 15-minute uh, meals is what we're after instead of four hours in Bray and 14 tables. So quite a, a diverse um, offering from, from our restaurants in, in London and, and the pubs in Bray. And I had a chat with Heston about it recently and, and the, these basics, the basics came up yet again and the basics of eye contact, of presentation, of knowledge, uh, and the requirements of it in every single level, the smile, the greet, the greeting, the farewell, the departure. Um, all you guys know this. Um, all you know is live and breathe it. Hence the question, why, I, why bring it up? I've had it before. We, we have um, great new technology. We have the uh, handhelds. Yeah, and use the handheld. Got little mini iPads. And I remember the first time using it, uh, watching the way to use it, and the whole conversation, you were practically talking to the iPad the whole time because the, it was like going on it straight away, making sure the buttons were done, and you're just thinking, again, it's great to have that speed because the idea is take the order, send it straight away, pew, boom, and it goes straight through, and in a dream world, if you have a large table, large table, you may take the drinks order and it will turn up. It's all about speed, but where's the interaction? Where's the eye contact? Where's the reassurance? Say, actually, I can see. Uh, are you, are you short on time? Leave it to me. I'll take care of it. Or it, where is that human element of 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 what we do? And I think sometimes we need to be very cautious not to embrace technology too much and forget about where we're at and who who uh, and why we're here. I mean, can't create this magical experience um, every time like the fact up, but you can create something special. You can, and it's all about the people. It's all about who you employ, how they engage with the guests. And for us, it's about the simple, simple, um, 
beliefs and values and culture. And Heston's self-taught. He, he's very open-minded, and I think that really rubs off on everyone. We challenge everything. We're not perfect by any means. We're far from it. Um, but we, we uh, like to look at things in, a, in an open light, and we like to uh, really challenge ourselves and pushing the boundaries wherever we can, not just culinary, but with service. Um, and sometimes you need to find that balance between the technology, the driven, the modern, and the core values that will stood us in good stead for many, many years. So, with that in mind, I'll leave you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for your time. And, uh, thank you.